This guy right here is Lynn Wood. He is a lawyer. He works for Trump and he's heading up his Stop the Steal campaign. Now, Lynn Wood for the past several weeks has been saying some crazy shit. He's also been tweeting some crazy shit. On New Year's Eve, he tweeted, I am fully aware of the onslaught of attacks being made against me based on my revelations about Chief Justice John Roberts. Before attacking me, maybe fair-minded people would first ask Roberts to tell the truth or ask Jeffrey Epstein. He is alive. Now, do I believe that Jeffrey Epstein's alive? I'll say this, I believe that Lynn Wood believes that Jeffrey Epstein is alive. Oh, Lynn Wood. I wonder if he watches my videos. And oh yeah, Happy New Year everyone! 2020 can suck a Two Epstein TikToks in a row for the new year, why not? Ghislaine Maxwell isn't too happy right now. She was denied bail not too long ago and now she's lashing out at an accuser. Maxwell's lawyers sent a letter to a judge saying that accuser Annie Farmer is seeking to obtain cash from their estates even though she's set to testify at Maxwell's upcoming trial. In November of 2019, Annie Farmer filed a civil lawsuit against Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, but she put it on hold in October of this year to accept an offer from Epstein's victim's compensation program. This requires her to drop any litigation against Epstein and his staff so she can collect the money. Now I know people agree to these things legally, but I don't care. Epstein and Maxwell are rich. Give her the money. The last man to share a jail cell with Jeffrey Epstein was a dude by the name of Efren Reyes. Efren Reyes died of COVID-19 last November, but before he did, he shared a few anecdotes about Jeffrey Epstein. One of the tidbits Efren Reyes shared was that Jeffrey Epstein was extorted by some of the inmates. He was also apparently ignored by the staff at the prison. Some of the ways that the staff made Epstein's life hell was by taking away his cot and making him sleep on the floor. According to Efren, Jeffrey Epstein was suicidal. Apparently, Ray said that Epstein wanted to off himself because he was convinced the government was going to do it first. Efren also said that Epstein was very depressed and that he didn't want to live anymore. As some of you may know, Ghislaine Maxwell was denied bail for a second time not too long ago. Allison Nathan was the judge that denied Maxwell her second bid. Judge Nathan denied the bid because she felt Maxwell wasn't being fully candid about her situation. When Maxwell was arrested, she claimed to only have $3.5 million in assets. Maxwell failed to mention that she brought $20 million to her marriage in 2016. And since then, she transferred millions to her husband through a trust. All of this went unreported. Judge Nathan also cited Maxwell's marriage. Maxwell says if she's given bail, she won't leave the country because she's too tied to her husband. Judge Nathan said that if Maxwell really did love her husband, she would have been living with him when she got arrested. Newly unsealed court documents detail how the FBI used cell phone data to track Ghislaine Maxwell. The FBI requested a warrant for the authorization to employ an electronic investigative technique to determine the location of Maxwell's cellular device. The FBI, through her cellular data, knew where she was but couldn't identify the exact building she was in. The warrant seems to suggest that the feds may have used a portable stingray device which is something that simulates a cell phone tower and forces nearby mobile phones to connect in order to hone in on someone's exact location. That actually sounds kind of fucking scary. Maxwell actually probably knew this is how they were tracking her. When she was arrested, she did wrap her phone up in aluminum foil. This guy right here is the former Attorney General 
William Barr. As Attorney General, William Barr served as the top law enforcement official of the country. That's why it's so strange to hear that William Barr, the top cop in the land, personally questioned Ephraim Stone Reyes, Jeffrey Epstein's last cellmate. A source close to Reyes apparently said Barr wanted to know about what was going on in there. And once Reyes shared the info, Barr said, I owe you a favor. Thank you for telling us the truth. According to Reyes, Barr was a good guy and he was nice about it. He just wanted to know what happened. Attorney generals don't do this. And as AG, it is Barr's fault that Epstein committed suicide. And oh yeah, for those of you that don't know, Reyes died of COVID last November. Ghislaine Maxwell behaving like a schoolyard bully? No! In a letter that Ghislaine Maxwell's friends sent a judge in order for her to get bail, Maxwell's friends compared her to Princess Diana. This is funny because Ghislaine Maxwell would tell her friends that she hated Diana and that she would bully her and that if she really wanted to, she could make her cry. The two were apparently introduced to one another back in 1984 at the premiere of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Elaine and her socialite friends would make fun of Diana's clothes and make catty remarks about the clothes designers, all that stupid rich people bullshit. Maxwell shared all of this with one of her victims, Maria Farmer. Maria Farmer, a psychologist, has stated many times that the power and money went to Maxwell's head and she is a bona fide sociopath! Before we get back to our regular scheduled program, did you guys see Epstein at the Capitol? He was there. Look. Hiding in plain sight, the bastard. I'm just kidding, he wasn't there. Hey, do you want to buy Epstein's New York mansion? Because it just got a 23 million price cut. Epstein's French neoclassic mansion was originally listed for 88 million in July 2020. Today though, it's going for 65 million. Why? Because nobody wants it. Nobody wants Epstein's creepy, spooky, scary pedo mansion. As you guys may know, they found a lot of creepy things in that mansion after Epstein's arrest. Golly gee, I wonder if somebody made a video about all of the creepy shit they found in Epstein's mansion. This bitch just don't quit! Ghislaine Maxwell's lawyers have suggested that they might seek bail for a third time. Maxwell's defense lawyer, Christian Everdell, asked for a 30-day extension to appeal the latest bail decision to give Ms. Maxwell the opportunity to research whether and to what extent these additional conditions are legally and practically available. They're just trying to tack on more stringent and restrictive conditions onto the bail to get her out of jail. Here, I got the conditions I think would be appropriate in order to give Ghislaine bail, all right? She needs to stay in a box, a room, all right? A box the size of a room, and she has to stay in that box for a long time, maybe the rest of her life, and never leave it. Oh wait, she's already there! Oh my God, why didn't this happen? Chris Hansen recently said that he wanted to set up Jeffrey Epstein in a To Catch a Predator style sting. In around 2014 or 2015, he met with lawyers representing some of Epstein's victims. In Hansen's own words, I met with these guys and they had a big file on it. And I was trying to fashion a To Catch a Predator like sting operation in which we could catch him. The levels of security at his place in New York were such that it was difficult to come up with something. The Florida home was difficult to come up with something. It was hard to set up anything at one of his homes in order to get him. Hansen also adds, and honestly guys, I got busy with other things. Could you imagine that? Chris Hansen and Jeffrey Epstein, like the two biggest pedophile memes ever. It would have blown up the universe. 
Todd Michael Glazer, the guy that bought Jeffrey Epstein's Palm Beach Mansion, says he wants to destroy it before April 1st. He needs to get special permission from the Palm Beach Neighborhood Association in order to do that. See, a lot of the rich billionaires are home for the winter months, and so they might not take kindly to, you know, a mansion being noisily destroyed. When it comes to this particular mansion, though, the billionaires might not mind the noise. Epstein's Palm Beach home has become a blight on the community. Lots of gawkers flock into the neighborhood to look at the notorious mansion. According to Glazer, he's gotten numerous emails and calls from random ass people looking to get inside the mansion. Some of the people looking to visit the mansion include a woman's group who wants to hold a prayer session in there. Jeffrey Epstein's Manhattan townhouse is a bit of an old building and it's got quite a history. The house was commissioned by Herbert Strauss, one of the heirs to Macy's, the department store chain. Strauss never lived in it though, and work on the house was halted shortly before Strauss's death in 1933. It went unfinished until 1944. That's when the sons of Herbert Strauss donated the house to the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of New York. They turned it into a hospital. Between the years 1962 and 1989, the house became the Birch Waffen School, which was a K-12 college prep school. In 1989, Les Wexner bought the house for $13.2 million, and in 1996, a fellow named Jeffrey Epstein moved into it. Eleventh Hour Films, a production company backed by Sony, has taken the rights to Hunting Ghislaine, a podcast on the disappearance of Epstein's close associate and madam, Ghislaine Maxwell. They're thinking about turning it into a TV limited series. What do I think about this? Well, you bastards! This was my idea! <laughs> Whatever, man, I can still do something. For those of you who can't get enough of the whole Epstein story, you guys should check out the podcast, Hunting Ghislaine. Basically tells the story of how this rich girl who had everything turned into one of the world's biggest monsters. And even though I am jealous that somebody's making a TV show out of something Epstein related, if it is made, I do look forward to watching it. DailyMail.com has obtained a lawsuit that claims that Victoria's Secret mogul Les Wexner let Jeffrey Epstein abuse girls at his mansion in Ohio. The lawsuit filed on Tuesday alleges that Les and his wife Abigail allowed Epstein to use their home for liaisons with victims. The lawsuit also claims that Wexner should have known that Epstein was posing as a Victoria's Secret modeling recruit to prey on aspiring young girls. And we all know that Virginia Roberts Gouffre claims that Epstein forced her to have sex with Les Wexner. This was all a part of a shareholder lawsuit brought against senior leadership at L Brands, a company that was founded by Wexner. Oh man, they're trying to take everything from him. Maxwell just doesn't get the memo, people. You're staying in jail! So fucking stay in there! Don't appeal shit! Back in November, Ghislaine Maxwell's second attempt at bail was rejected by a judge. The bail was set at around 30 million, but the judge rejected it over what she called deception on Maxwell's part. The judge basically found her too much of a flight risk. But here we go. They're trying to appeal this bail that was soundly rejected. The audacity of these people. Not only are they appealing this second bail rejection, they're also planning on setting up another attempt at getting bail. A third attempt. I do like these rejections though because it means that she's going to stay in jail. Hopefully forever. She goes on trial this July. This is Sarah Kellen. 
an alleged Epstein sex slave recruiter and her husband, Brian Vickers. They're in the news because apparently they're terrible neighbors. They live in what used to be the home of Lindsay Lohan, a luxury building in 92 Green Street in New York City. Their neighbors hate them because apparently their apartment is always under construction. The construction and remodeling has been going on for years and apparently it's driving people out of the building. In recent years, Kellen hasn't really been seen in public until she showed up in New York after Maxwell's arrest in July of 2020. This has led people to believe that Kellen might testify against Maxwell in her trial. Kellen has maintained that she was a victim of Epstein and not a recruiter. Prince Andrew's in the news again for being a very, very bad boy. Apparently he tried to get this woman, Molly Sky Brown, a known online troll to try and discredit Virginia Roberts Gouffre. Prince Andrew and his ex-wife Sarah Ferguson wanted Molly Sky Brown to set up a fake Twitter account to post things in an attempt to discredit Virginia Roberts Gouffre. The couple specifically wanted Molly Sky Brown to try and prove that this picture of Prince Andrew and Virginia Roberts Gouffre was doctored. Molly Sky Brown has long accused Virginia Roberts Gouffre of helping Epstein and Maxwell. She doesn't really consider her a victim. Brown herself said that she was approached by Maxwell when she was 14 with the promises of modeling and acting work which she did not accept. Either way, fuck Prince Andrew. Damn, this is kind of crazy. Tuesday, January 19th, a court proceeding on the documents and civil litigation against Ghislaine Maxwell was interrupted when the judge became aware that the court proceedings were being unlawfully live streamed on YouTube. 14,000 listeners had managed to find a way into this live stream and within the chat, they were leaving phrases like free our children now, protect the kids from these weirdos, and national popcorn day. The judge then notified the streamers that what was going on was illegal and then shut down the stream. I was wondering when QAnon was going to interject itself into the case and it looks like it's happened. You know, Ghislaine's probably lucky she's in police custody right now. They stormed the Capitol, homie. I'm sure they'd have no problem storming a mansion in New Hampshire. In November 1991, Robert Maxwell, Ghislaine Maxwell's father, disappeared from his yacht. His body was found floating hours later. Not long after, Maxwell's family gathered at the yacht to give a statement to the press. Ghislaine was the one who gave the statement. Journalists who were there at the event said that she looked a little nervous and not particularly sad. There's actually footage of this event, which is crazy. I gotta, I gotta find that. On the podcast Power the Maxwells, check it out, journalist John Jackson said that he heard her telling crew shred all faxes and any documents and she was actually going through the yacht throwing documents on the floor for the crew to shred. Since 1991, Maxwell has denied these claims. So Big Daddy Maxwell, Robert Maxwell, famed businessman and publishing giant, father to Ghislaine Maxwell, died in 1991 while yachting near the Canary Islands. To this day, there is still some mystery concerning Robert Maxwell's death. Some say it was an accident, others say it was suicide, others say it was murder. Here are some specific details regarding his death. When Maxwell was scooped up from the sea, he had no water in his lungs. A post-mortem revealed that the muscles on his left shoulder were torn and the left side of his spine was bruised. Some people say he had a heart attack, other people say he fell overboard, others say he was murdered. It's been reported that that day, Robert Maxwell's yacht was being trailed by a boat and all of his companies were on the verge of bankruptcy. all my Trump fans out there, I'm sorry about this one. 
know that I don't provide this information out of malice. I provide this information to tell the story. If there's any malice, it's towards the oligarchs that use their horrible power to destroy people. The Epstein-Trump friendship started in the late 80s. The glue that kept this friendship together was a similar lifestyle. Wealth, women, and Palm Beach real estate. Ghislaine was the one that introduced them. Epstein was instrumental in rehabbing Trump after his casinos went bust in Atlantic City. In 1992, Trump and Epstein had a calendar girl competition and invited 28 young women to participate. They were the only judges. There's a lot more info regarding this. Stay tuned for part two. Billionaire CEO of Apollo Global Management, Leon Black has resigned over ties to Epstein. It was found out not too long ago that after Les Wexner dropped Epstein, Leon Black stepped in and gave Epstein a shit ton of cash. He basically became Epstein's new sugar daddy. An independent investigation conducted by Apollo Global Management found that Leon Black gave Jeffrey Epstein $158 million over a six year period. What was this $158 million for? Well, it was for a variety of issues related to trust, estate planning, tax, philanthropy, and the operation of the family office. What do I have to say to that? I fucking doubt it.